This episode is sponsored by Goodmeads Emporium, found on Etsy.com. Look, I'm not entirely sure why you keep paying this gym fella a monthly fee. Instead of paying to go hang out at his place and look at heavy equipment being moved from one place to another by sweaty humanoids, come by Goodmeads Emporium. Over at Goodmeads Emporium, we've got miniatures and models which will absolutely make you feel fulfilled when you purchase, paint, and play with them. I guarantee you that painting six-pack abs on is infinitely easier than sculpting them out of your flesh. Head on over to Good Meads Emporium on Etsy. New releases monthly. Hey, forget about it. I saw this tile on Instagram, and it was Movies Explained Badly, and it was, uh, I think, episode three of Star Wars, and it was... Man murders all co-workers because he is denied promotion. <laughs> I was like, he's not wrong. <laughs> that is what the movie is about. <laughs> 50 Feet of Rope, a tabletop podcast of good friends throwing bad dice. Your cast, Adam plays Crow, who is a swashbuckler rogue. I am hoping you have a story that you can tell me. Brian plays Pix, who is a wild magic sorcerer. I feel you're so cute, but I also want to vomit. Chris plays Scraps, who is an alchemist artisifer. This is not scientific. Josh plays Wally, who is a divination wizard. Study, 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 study. <laughs> Lindsay plays Salt, who is a gunslinger fighter. Yeah, bro, you just gotta catch the cosmic wave just right. And featuring Julian as the dungeon master. I take deep visceral pleasure in informing you that this time you do not get sneak attack this is campaign one shanties of the astral sea a custom spell jammer homebrew game developed by julian himself episode 10 the great Lou. captain harcourt is dead after trying to heal his mind salt and scraps discover their poor captain was consumed by an intellect devourer the real captain had died some time before the rescue. While Salt figures out their next steps, the rest of the adventurers accept the hospitality provided to them. All the while, unbeknownst to them, there is a stirring in the distant shadows, biding its time, waiting to strike. Wally and Crow, still in the, 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 the main longhouse, having a wonderful time as as hardcore is being shot to death, uh, you guys are having. There's, there's also. Well, so you see, we have the, the these mushrooms here, but we also have these mushrooms here. Now, okay, but like, all right. So, which which mushrooms let you see like the inner workings of the universe, like the magic oh. behind the magic? <laughs> you know, because I'm always <laughs> breaking how the universe works. But I want to see it. That's these mushrooms here, and he pulls out. Um, like a folded, a nice folded white cloth, and he opens it up in front of you, and there's like a couple of, I don't know, palmfuls of dried purple-ish mushrooms. They're like a purplish, brownish, kind of eggplanty sort of color. And he just is like, yeah, these these ones are the ones that are really uh, set, you, set you off. I wouldn't recommend you take too much. And he takes uh, kind of like a, a kind of wrinkly looking mushroom cap, and he's like, if you're interested, here you go. And he hands it I to mean, you. Now, now you, when you say too much, um, I, how much would you take? Oh, about what I'm handing you. You would, you, you'd eat this whole thing? Yeah, and he's a full-sized human. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a human, not an elephant person? No, no, it's not a, it's not a loxodon. It's just like a guy. Oh, I thought everyone here was loxodon. No, no, there's some elves, some dwarves. There's a couple of Oh, yeah, you did say around. that. My bad. Yeah, Anyways. Yeah. Okay. And this will let me see, like, the universe behind the universe. You know, like, the yeah. inner world. Oh, you're going like, to see all break. sorts of universes. Yeah, and he's, like, and he's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, my size, your size. What is so oh, no, no, been... no, no. And Wally, like, holds his hand out, holds, holds oh. back his mushroom. Ah, hold on. Well, all right. Now, if, I mean, if you're sure, you seem confident and small. Does this destroy your intellect as no, well? No, no, no. I mean, I wouldn't make any plans. Yes. Well, what, yes. what are we doing in the next 12 hours? Well, I don't know what you're doing in the next 12 hours. And I know what I would like to do in the next 12 hours. If you would like to go and 
Well, see the universe. I can be here to hold your hand if you need. Crow's going to babysit. Oh, that's good. Make sure I don't get hurt. And he eats the whole mushroom. Oh, right. Cool. Oh, oh, God. That tastes like... It does. It tastes awesome. It tastes like what what it's grown in. It does. It tastes... I mean, it is bitter and foul and funky and like licking the underside of a rain barrel. Uh, It's just like, there's nothing good about what this tastes like. Uh, Uh, It tastes like Uncle Taft's pouch. (laughs) Um, (laughs) what? Uh, What? Oh my gosh. I really hope that's not a euphemism. Oh, he's got a a component pouch. A component pouch. He keeps everything in it. Well, I mean, he's not a oh wizard. My God. He's just got a bag. Oh, and he's got stuff in it. And oh, I licked his sack, and it tasted terrible. Yeah, oh my I mean, God. his sack does taste terrible. Oh, I don't understand oh, why God. everyone thinks this is funny. He immediately, the man immediately pushes a, a wooden <laughs> tanker towards you. He's like, "Yeah, it does. It tastes terrible." I. I I guzzle down whatever's in, in the wooden yeah, tank. Yeah, it's it's oh some sort God. of it's some sort of fruit, uh, you know, some sort of nectar or fruit juice. It's sweet, okay. and it takes some of the sting out. But man, oof, your uh, your stomach doesn't feel super great. Um, go go ahead, lick my component pouch. Go ahead and uh, lick my pouch. Roll roll a Constitution save for me, please. That oh, seems God. fair. Yeah. Uh. It is. It's DC thirteen, which you just oh, right on the just money, baby. Hit. This right is, on the money. I think this bodes well for your trip. Um, <laughs> oh my god! So, what is it that you wanted to do? In, oh, hold in- on. I need to do something. This is my poor tent rolls for the day. I haven't made them. I might need them. A one. A one is the. Ooh. A one is the second best number you can have on poor tent because you can do it yeah. to yourself oh, or yeah. someone else. Oh, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So. Now that I'm babysitting Wally on his mushroom trip, I don't need a babysitter. Just no one, no one made you do that. Me in the realm, if it so, is a hmm. Now that I have a rapier that I need to, um, you know, figure out what we're doing. Mm-hmm. My idea was that does everybody remember Peter and the Wolf? Yes, very well, actually. Is that? The story that I would like to tell is by song. And with my pipes, I want to create a uh, melody that is Wally on the piccolo. And, uh-huh. and scraps lower on the oboe. The mystery oboe scraps, and everybody have their own sound as I start to create the story that I'm going to bring home. But my story is by sound. Roll, that I'd like to do. Roll a performance check for me, please. Performance, not my best, but I'll take it. I will take an eighteen. Yeah, you are. You're doing this in the in the kind of like the higher part of the evening. I mean, the sun is completely set. It is dark outside. There is a fire that crackles in the mid portion of the longhouse that you're in. There's braziers on either side. There's a warm, heavy atmosphere. People but in are, the longhouse, there are people who have already eaten mushrooms. There are. There is a there is a low murmur of conversation, and all of a sudden. The high piping noise of your what 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 um instrument are you playing? So they're called bird pipes. I imagine them like um, pan pipes that okay. can mimic like the the, the the sounds of birds. So high right. too low. So you your the the high the high clear whistling sound of the high note that you use for Wally comes through and cuts across the conversations of all of the people in the room. And there's actually a lull, a silence, as this fluting trill, this like beautiful piping bird song comes through and all of a sudden, all of the eyes are on you. And you, the natural showman that you are, stand at that kind of central portion of of flagstones, that circle that is made in the middle of the length of the room. 
and you hear some chairs shifting and you feel some some more attention directed towards you and you shift to the low mysterious sound of scraps on the other end of the pipes and people are drawn in and you start to weave the story of your your group done very um abstractly obviously in the form of music the more kind of um glissandos of of salt as you take the pipes up and down to represent the more laid back member of your crew the the sometimes shrill and sometimes uh, uh discordant elements that are picks but that still create rhythm and punctuation for the song picks is a soprano of Ooh. course and weaving in your own portions a kind of more uh smoky more uh uh low quality sound from your pipes, bringing in your own notes to the music. And you watch as the crowd responds to this. Wally, you don't just feel kind of sick to your stomach anymore. You're like, mm, gonna throw up, gonna. <sighs> oh, okay, nope, not gonna puke because you passed your con save. And as you're fighting that feeling down, you're like, okay, no, no, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. That's when you hear the high piercing um, piping sound. And you actually watch as across the room, there's a, a rippling through the air as this kind of short, close to the ground distortion of, the, of, of, of light and sound and smoke just kind of bounces along for a second. And then that lower thing comes along and you see that the shadow in the corner of the room detaches and it kind of like moves in close to it and it has a long pointed face. And you hear that discordant kind of soprano sound and you watch as um, from above, there's motes of light that catch in the uh, in the smoke and, the, and, the, and the, 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 the heat from the flames. And you watch as it twists for a moment and a young girl stands there, but only in the form of smoke and is gone again. This shit's hitting hard. Holy shit. Uh huh. Uh, the I can see the music. The glissandos the of, music. of salt come through, and you actually watch as it as it forms, almost like uh, the warmth of the room is coming up oh. on you, like a surf, like a tide. It's salt. Oh, oh friend. Oh. And you feel just the briefest, like, brush against your face as the room is just filled with all of these people. And every single one of them has in it a mind. And every single one of those minds is experiencing this moment. Every single one of them is a reflection of you experiencing the moment because you exist in their minds, too. Wally starts casting magic at this point. Um, he starts using prestidigitation um, and he is just using it to like make colors dance on the table. Um, and um, that's pretty much, I think that's what Hold on. The, the extent of. Yes. Can I give, can I give a recommendation, Julian? Yeah. Wally's casting magic on mushrooms. You should make him roll on a wild magic day. <gasps> I <laughs> deeply, deeply like that idea. Yeah, okay, so Wally is trying just to make colors like dance on the tables yeah, and yeah, the yeah. floor. I know, use because... I use a wild magic table that has kind of three settings. There's like uh scary, dangerous, um, kind of mid-level, and then a like no big deal low key thing. Um, I'm just going to assume you automatically roll on the low key, no big deal thing. That, that seems so. Just roll a percentile die. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, just, 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 uh, roll d100. Fifty-four. <laughs> okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, you are by trade, by training, a wizard. You have spent yeah. countless hours reviewing formulae, thinking about how to do the calculations, memorizing uh, the the incantations, the movements necessary. You have of course that is what one does. 
Of course, you've sprained your fingers, creating the hand motions necessary sometimes to train yourself to that manual dexterity. But right now, all you need to do is, oh, well, how did you never notice that throughout everything there are golden threads crisscrossing and forming Nexi? Well, just, you know, pull that one. Isn't that the spell? And you flick the air in front of you. And rather than uh, a, a cascade of fireworks, as you normally do with your cantrip, you watch as the, 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 the Nexi, that like intersection of golden threads, vibrates faster, 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 and begins to actually coalesce in on itself and forms this three-dimensional um, lattice work. And there is a brief popping sound, like, and instead of it being this um, three-dimensional hyper-tessellated cube of magical energies, it is actually a perfectly clear cut diamond uh, that just hovers in midair for a second, catching the firelight, scattering it into a prism and then it drops heavily onto the table in front of you. Wait, did I just create a diamond? You literally just made a diamond appear out of thin air. Oh! Wally leaps onto the table, grabs the diamond, holds it up in his hands, uh, still pumping like prestidigitation in it to it to like make it glow, and he goes, I did the bippity boppity boo magic! As you push prestidigitation, you watch as the firelight catches in the facets of the gem and radiates outwards into a rainbow in every direction, spotlighting every single part of the room in red, orange, yellow, green, Just blue, violet, and octarine impossibility as the entire tripping room goes, <gasps> what? Salt and scraps aboard the Lady Luck. At their feet, the cooling body of Captain Harcourt his head an unrecognizable mess, um, where once was a salt and pepper and roguish good looks. Uh, there is now just, it's not great to look at. And um, we're also with the Loxodon, right? Uh, yeah, Lovis, Lovis is also Lovis. in the room. He is, uh, he is back um, downstairs and he is kind of timorously coming upstairs after the violence and bullets have stopped flying. Um, is everything all right up here? Uh, yes, Scrap says as he um, bends down and scrapes up the remainder of the intellect devourers. Wait, how did it die? Uh, it got shot to death. Um, bits of it flew all. Bits of it were were blasted all across your face, actually, because salt like flew up the stairs ahead of it, whipped around, dead eye sighted down his barrel and blew it to pieces. But unfortunately you were on the other side of that and just caught a face full of uh, illithid, illithid brain beast matter. You said, unfortunately I caught a face full? <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not gonna yuck your yum. Scraps um, licking his lips says, everything's fine as he bends over and scrapes up the remainder of the- Where did Scraps get lips from? Uh, as he licks his beak. <laughs> Everybody's sort of chicken lips. <laughs> I'm picking it up. Also searching its body such as it is. I'm guessing it's just a brain. It's just, I mean, there's strange, unknowable organs inside of it. It's not just a brain. Um, it has, you know, it has a method of locomotion. It has legs. It has uh, something that lets it do the things it does. It's not literally just a brain, but... Um, it just really, really looks like one. I'm going to go through Harcourt's pockets. Uh, okay, you're going to go through Harcourt's pockets. You find... Uh, give me give me an investigation check. A whole five! You find a, a small leather pouch that has 1,000 ball bearings in it, um, a small bell, a couple, uh, and a hooded lantern that he has kept in a kind of like pouch around his waist. It's a very small lantern. Um, Chris, did you want to also attempt to make a uh, an investigation roll? I do. And I would like my homunculus servant to assist me. I think that he can dive in smaller pockets than I can with my clumsy gloves. And for the folks listening at home, that was a great roll. Double 19. <laughs> I appreciate that you're doing that. Uh, yes, uh, with, for a total of 25, you actually see... As you're as you're rifling through his pockets, you see a couple of other 
this and that. So he's got some string. He's got a little, um, you know, a little thing of, uh, you see he's got the belt that he uses to keep his rapier on and some things like that. But you also notice as you're running through his pockets that because he is sort of, sort of a rascally kind of guy, he, he gets into scrapes and things like that. You also see that um, he has hidden pockets sewn into part of his outfit. And part of what you see in one of, this, in one of these hidden pockets uh, is a set of thieves tools. But as your homunculus is kind of like scooching around inside of his, his doublet, inside of his jerkin and things like that, his, po- his false pockets that he has sewn are very precise, very tiny little stitches. They're meant to blend in with a gusset or they're meant to blend in with part of a seam. There's one of them that has been stitched that's actually kind of sloppy. The stitches are a little rough. It looks hurried. And it's actually ah. sealed all the way around. Um, and you okay. see one part where the stitches have been pulled out and then restitched and then pulled out and then restitched. I will carefully open that pocket. You rip open the stitches. You what jumps out at me? And you pull it open and a small sort of round stone, smooth, like a river stone, um, like almost perfectly circular, like this would be a really good skipping stone, uh, falls into your hand. And one side of it has a very intricate rune that has been etched into it, uh, a kind of like complicated design that looks almost artistic, but there's also a very functional kind of feeling to it. And uh, yeah, he has it sewn into that pocket and that's in the party sheet now. Hey. I hold it up for Salt. Does this mean anything to you? And then as Salt, as presumably as you're examining it, I continue say, saying like, I'm glad you fired first, Salt. This thing we killed was not our captain. Yeah. Our captain's been dead for the better part of a week. Well, well you got a tarper, like a sail or something, scraps that we can like wrap him in. Yes. And as we brush, and as I go to my workshop to get that material, which I'm sure I either have or can make or can scrounge from the ship, I'll pass by Lovis and I'll say to him, how is Lovis looking? Is he befuddled? Is he taking this in stride? Like what's he? What's... He looks well. Uh, roll an insight check. Hopefully, I do. Whoa! Ooh, there you go. That. Nat twenty, twenty-two. Natural um, twenty. He looks shaken. He looks. Um, I mean, you brought him here to heal this person, and then within within about five minutes of him helping the guy, you blew his head off. Um, <laughs> he's he's shaken, but he doesn't look. Um, he's not afraid of you. He's not, he doesn't look frightened. He just looks like, oh my God, these things happen so very quickly. And he's a little, he's a little like, you know, shaken. But as, as you're, um, kind of puttering around looking for a tarp or, or something to wrap the captain, he actually, he actually kneels down to the captain's body and he gently places a hand on the captain and, um, he murmurs something very quietly. And you can, um, if you're listening, if you're close to him, you can hear him say, at one point of the wheel you entered, and now you exit at another. May the next turn be kind. And from where Lofus is touching him, you watch as actually uh, a multicolored, a rainbow of, of fungal growth and mushrooms kind of spread out radially away from his hand, and they actually kind of coat Harcourt into this brief wave, um, and then they fade away, leaving a little bit of not like, like it doesn't coat him like a carpet. It kind of is a, a rolling wave of them that then fade away. But wherever there were uh, wounds, there's now left these like um, brilliant, almost gem-like kind of um, mushroom caps. So where his ruined head was, uh, there's now actually this kind of thicket of brilliantly colored blue and green and orange and yellow mushrooms. Um, and he About just the kind last of the starts. Aww, gently it's pats fungal. him. He pats him it's on the fungal chest. Kintsugi. And he just kind of like pats him on the chest and he's like, I am sorry for your friend. I, is it is this mushroom Kintsugi? I don't know what that is. I'm, this, I'm talking to you, but this is simply a right of my people when when death takes them to ensure that they do not <sighs> there are times when the wheel turns. And others feel that it is not meat 
that it should turn for them, or that a loved one should not be allowed to exit at their preordained time. And they pervert the turning. And so all of the people of my of my order have learned how to ensure that no one is brought back in this perverse way. And what I have done is ensure that your friend cannot be uh, made into a mockery. Thank you. That Thank you. Thank you, because the person we thought was our friend has been a mockery of the type that you're describing for several days now. He was he was of the undead. He was of the returned. I'm not sure if he was that kind of mockery. Ah, this, ah, ah. Yes, yes, a this different form of perversion of life. Yes, I understand. Yes, that's yes, right, yes. 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 Uh, oh, I will say, there are parasites who are still part of the great working of the Great Reclaimer. But that is that is a theological and also biological discussion for another time, perhaps, when you're not grieving. Uh, Julian. Yes, Lindsay. The silken rope we now know as a rope of climbing. Uh, is that you, correct? Uh, you don't know that it is a rope of climbing. You okay. know that it can be used as a rope of climbing. Gotcha. Okay. It is still unidentified. Unidentified. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Rubble, rubble. Um, yeah, so what are you guys, uh, what are you doing with Harcourt's body? Put it in the basement. Um, wait, I lift up a hand as I see you taking it, Salt, and I'm going to say to Lo- to Salt and Lovis, um, Captain, is it more appropriate for us to take this body elsewhere, or perhaps you, Lovis, have a burial ritual? We do. We have consecrated ground near the great, the tree of the great mother. Uh, if I, you are not of our ways, but we would honor your dead in our ways. Is 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 this to your liking, Captain? Perhaps it would do honor to our memories of Harcourt, and yet perhaps we should leave as little trace here as possible. Salt, this is also the first time that you have been called Captain. Oh, I know. When you know that you're not passing the buck off to Harcourt again later on. You are not temporary captain now, Salt. <laughs> I kind of just nod to both of them. I continue down the stairs with Harcourt's body to the hold of the ship. We we are touched by your offer, friend Lovis. Thank you. Uh, I come back up and I say, we'll ask the Salia. She traveled with him more than I did. And Lovis kind of like turns his head down. And says, oh, my poor niece. Was she close with him? Uh, I don't know. She Not really, be... I don't think. Well, she always was a very sensitive soul. Please break the news to her gently. We're going to cut from that somber moment to the raucous and wild interior of the lodge uh, where uh, high piping flute music is accompanying a straight up rave uh, as Crow is playing his lungs out, recreating the story of the Lady Luck and the crew in their various misadventures while Wally casts beams of light at the wall and a, you know, spinning orbs of, of oscillating colors. I just wanted to make sure you guys got this out of your system. What, Wally, what do you do as you're in the in the grips of this mushroom psychedelia? Oh, Jesus Christ. Do you want to oh, take a I minute? I never even turned out. Yeah, go to Adam first. Okay, Adam, what are you doing? Uh, you, have, you have, like, honestly, a rapt audience. There are people who are, like, like, cl- like grasping at the air as invisible notes fly by them. There's others who stare at you slack-jawed. Wally is is creating this bizarre, like, visual narrative. Oh, out an absolute light. wild light show for for him. Like, yeah. What are you up uh, to, Pro? So, um, what the heck's the name of that movie? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. The Will Ferrell movie, Jazz Flute. Oh, um, the tables. it's uh, Anchorman. Anchorman. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally that. Walking on the tables, like cupping people's faces and like playing the flute in their face. Totally hamming it up. I want you to do me a favor. Just just roll an acrobatics and a performance check. 
Woo, oh, woo. 27, oh, wow. not 20. This this bodes well. Continue. Give me your now. Give me the advantage performance check. I'll take it. I'll take 22. 18 for 22. Yeah, people rolling high right now. I really hope this doesn't like you know run out all of your 20s. Uh, um, yeah. <clears throat> Statistics works that way, right? Yeah, sure. Hmm. Crow, you are. I mean, with the grace of the cat that you are, leaping from table to table, uh, you you're actually creating this like acrobatics routine that mimics and mimes the battles that you're describing musically. It becomes actually kind of a performance art piece more than just a musical piece. You are you spring and leap and dive and at one point you even like jump to the rafter and catch around it with one arm while you're playing your flute with the other. Uh, people are, are losing their minds over this. You rush past one like, you know, uh, attractive young elf person and uh, your tail like slithers around them and you play the flute right in their face and they legitimately faint and fall on the ground. <laughs> um, Love it. You are hitting notes, impossibly high notes. You are sliding under tables. It's insane. I mean, this is this is the Anchorman scene, but actually the entire audience is on drugs. And what they're seeing is just as crazy as what you're actually doing. Bouncing from table to table, leaping over people, somersaulting, still playing the flute in midair. Um, as light and color and sound whirl around in this wood and stone and mud adobe structure, where which has briefly turned into a basement jazz flute rave. Because that's what's going on right now. I'd like to end up actually kind of closer to Wally and hopefully I can start decrescendoing the music and kind of calming Wally down with the lights and kind of calming the room down a little bit and just allow them to enjoy the mushrooms. Oh, no, there, there is no calming Wally down. Wally is actually, at this point, um, he, he, has, he has cast uh, Fortune's Favor on himself, just FYI, somewhere in the, his light show. And he is currently climbing up uh, so what, what's the ceiling like? Tell me what the ceiling is like. What is the highest place while you can climb? What does okay. the ceiling taste like, Julian? <laughs> what were the construction methods used? Uh, the I ceiling... mean, those are really questions I would ask if we're yeah. in mushrooms no, no. right now. But the... instead, I just had to hit a pot before I started playing, so I'm not that hot. There you go. The the, the building is constructed. It's, it's like big stone, uh, uh, you know, like these huge pieces of masonry that are done to create a, a high-walled structure. But then the roof is giant timbers. I mean, basically felled trees yeah. that are used to create um, an A-frame for the roof. There are, you know, uh, spine timbers that go the whole length yep. of it. And then there's, you know, yeah, triangles so, that come down. Yeah, so we're always climbing up to be on one of these timbers, like however far up that is. Yeah, a good, a good like 30 feet up, sure. All right, and I'm still like pumping. Do I have to roll for that? I'm yeah, still pumping like lights the whole time. Like, just give me, give me an athletic roll. It's a low DC. There's plenty of handholds, but go ahead. For those for those listening at home, he rolled a 16 with a plus four for 20. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's big, chunky pieces of stone and masonry. Yeah. The handholds are easy to get to. Then you're just basically like scrambling up onto a tree trunk. You get yeah. yourself to the to the peak, the highest point of this of the of the ceiling. You're a disco ball. You're a disco ball, Wally. You're like projecting light. I am a 35 pound disco ball. All right, and I am making my own techno rave without you know, with with I don't know loop music. Um, but Wally is just jamming here and he gets up to the top and he makes it like he brings all the lights around to himself and goes, I am a motherfucking wizard and leaps off feather fall as soon as he jumps and he floats gently to the ground as a pulsating lit up 35 pound. Go ahead. Do me a favor, roll a D100, and I'm going to flip a coin and not tell you the results. All right. A D9. Okay, that's a nine. You scream this out loud, and you actually feel like, as you do this, you feel the magic emanate through your body, rush out of your mouth. Light actually bursts out of your mouth as you yell and it actually reverberates. Like your voice is now supernaturally loud as you're yelling that you're a motherfucking wizard. 
it starts to take on like musical tones and reverberation. It's like yelling through a microphone with an effect put on it. Um, and everything you say now sounds like that. It is, it is startlingly loud, as though you are screaming at the top of your lungs, even though you're speaking in a normal voice. And everything has this weird flange effect on it. Okay, when Wally lands, he's still pulsing and he's he's starting to make like the colors spin around him and stuff, his presentation colors. And he goes, I have seen into the heart of the universe, and we are on a great room upon which the world is moving, and it is beautiful. <laughs> The trip is getting even wilder for you. The room is is expanding outwards in every direction. The wall feels like it's hundreds and hundreds of feet away. Everybody is surrounded with kind of a luminous aura as they're dancing to the music, as they're, you know, like just kind of, some of them just standing there swaying and you see that there's after images in the auras as they move. Uh, you can, you start to feel like there's something in the light. There's a thing, there's a message in the light. I know it because they're on the loom too. What is it? What is the message in the light? It always eludes you. You don't, language isn't equipped for this. Words can't express this. Magic is beyond language. Oh my Break God. Wally is having like immense like breakthroughs right now. So he pulls his mat, his, uh, his, you know, spell book scroll case off of his back and he pulls out a sheet of vellum and he's just sitting in the middle of one of the tables that everyone was eating at and he's got three different colors of ink and a quill pen and all of a sudden Wally is just writing out who knows what it is maybe it's a ninth level wish spell that he won't be able to understand again for a year but um something something cosmically important <laughs> it's the exact same result. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you you feel like you can, you can see as you're writing, like you can see it's not just words written on the page. You're filling in the lines of sacred geometry. There's there's shapes beyond shapes. There's things that are not just solids. They're the solids that exist around solids. Is this the fourth dimension? Is this the third dimension extended along yet another axis? How would the loom function on something that is no longer three-dimensional, but perhaps some unknowable 15 dimensions, perhaps? Uh, and Wally, in the state um, of psychedelia, begins to discover advanced mathematics and non-Euclidean non topographies. Can I and, make a request? Sure. Can this be what Wally is writing um, be foresight, which is the only ninth level divination spell? He obviously will not be able to use it until he actually gets there. But like in this mushroom trip, he is actually discovering. Something. He's discovering. He's discovering something, and he's we'll discovering uh, something. We can figure out what it we'll is. figure it out. Never mind. Um, he is like, but this is he is. There is insight. Like this isn't the thing about magic is. It, it is it is discernible by by madmen and fools and students of the arcana light. There is some. Really there's some fucking high gender. Uh, and there's something, there's some, there is something here. It's not just in your head. I mean, it is just in your head, but you know, for a wizard, something being in their head is actually kind of a big deal. I mean, because if it's in my head, then I can make it real. Thank you for saying that, God. That's a really great way to put it. I put it right here into my thing. That's yeah. voice, that's you got it, me. Wally. Please. Wally, you'll, you'll get it later. You'll understand. Don't worry, Wally. Thank you, Master of Dungeons. And Wally just starts like this huge nose bleed. And he's the, now he's taking the blood off of his nose and writing that into whatever his spell is. Uh, Crow, as you're as you're like winding down in your music, one of one of the uh, the Loxodons comes over to you and it's just like, is he okay? I think perhaps that what you gave him was meant for a much bigger person. I didn't I I didn't give him anything. It was it was that guy over there. And you see that there's a human who is who is sat at one of the benches and is staring at the ceiling like oh, oh, I didn't know colors came in this variety. Oh. And he is on the bad end of the trip. Uh, well, um, I'll get I'll watch him. He seems to be in a in okay space and very busy. 
Sure I find can... this is important. I've realized the secret background of the universe. Don't worry about me. I've never been better. So I'll just uh, quietly sit in the corner and quietly keep playing pipes and quietly keeping an eye on Wally to make sure he doesn't wander off out of the wilderness. The mood of the room does start to come down. It becomes a little more mellow. Someone comes and joins you. They're playing kind of a, a you know, one of those long uh, dulcimers with their, they're gently tapping. It becomes a much more mellow vibe, but Wally is still furiously scribing in his in his scroll blood spatters from his nose every once in a while but it just gets mixed into the inks um and the, the light show is still centered around him but it's a, it's not the focal point anymore since he uh, did his stage dive uh we're gonna leave them we're gonna move into a, a much quieter space where only two people are um that is lit only by a couple of candles um as the frenetic pillow fight activity has wound down and Thessalia sits um, or reclines in her bed with her, her you know, rough spun uh, quilt pulled up around. Her trunk is laid out on top of it. Um, and Pix, are you, are you sharing the bed with her or are you uh, taking the floor? No, I wouldn't share the bed with her. She's too big. I mean, I don't mean to be mean, but. She... Well, then she has helped you to create a, a, a nest of all of these like thick, well-made, but but kind of um, humble blankets. You know, there's there's actually, and there's probably also some furs in there too. Um, you know, stacks of them that have been laid on the floor to create a big thick uh, pad of material to sleep on. You're quite warm. I mean, you're all bundled up in it, but it's, you know, it's, a, it's also a stack of quilts and, and furs. So it's not exactly the, the beds that you're used to. Um, and it's a little quiet now. There's only a, one candle burning that is keeping the gloom of the, the room at bay. And Thessalia is, um, you can't see all of her. You can just see, see one, one tusk kind of pointing up um, from the edge of the bed. Hey, Pix. Yeah, Thessalia, how you doing? Oh, oh, you're not asleep, okay, okay. Could, what's what's bothering ask, you? Well, can I ask you a question? Yeah, I guess so. You you said you have a brother, right? And, and uh, that's where Pix gives us like her cheerful voice. She's, just, uh, yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Um, I've never um, I've never had a brother. Um, and I don't remember my parents. Is it weird if I ask you what it's like to um? Well, uh, well, I guess, um, what's your brother like? Oh, oh, you know, he's kind of a geek. He likes, um, he likes is that like a, like, um, like a, oh, you don't have magic. So it's not like a magic person. Do you, is no, it like, like these things, shows he watches and he's into Godzilla and all these things that used to drive me crazy and be so into them and like yeah but i don't know you don't realize how special they are until he's gone you miss him uh, every day every minute well like did he because sometimes you talk about him and it, it almost sounds like you you kind of don't like him very much oh i don't know Think of, I don't know, the crew, you know, that you're used to. Everyone's got their own salt coming in, being grumpy in the morning, asking for coffee. You know, that's kind of irritating and stuff like that. But, you know, when it's not around, you you start appreciating it because well, that's what makes them special. Well, what did you look like? Did you look like you, Pix? No, I mean, no, he's... And first of all, let's not say what did he look like. What does he look like? Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. I don't mean to say that he's like, you know, I'm. He's out. I know he's out there, but I just, I'm, I'm sorry. That was. It's really hard because thoughtless. the world is so, the universe is so big, and we are literally looking for something so small. I don't know what to do. Well, 
what does he look like? Because maybe if, if I know what he looks like and I see him, I'll know and I'll I'll be able to tell you that I saw him. A uh, small human boy, you know, 11 years old with permanent bedhead. Oh, like when my ears get stuck on the side of my head. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, just like that. I mean, uh, brown hair, you know, kind of green eyes. Just like you. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Does, yeah. Is that is that what your mom and dad look like too? Yeah, my mom has brown hair. My dad had light, like kind of like light brown, almost blonde. I don't know. Sometimes he dyes it. He's such a prick. I'm not really sure what you mean. I think I might know what you mean when you say prick, but I'm a little um. Think of a giant penis that's all flaccid. Oh, 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 oh. You said you said penis. I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, why are you calling your dad a penis? Because he is one. He's a dickhead. Whoa, okay. I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. He wants to take he wants to take my brother to California because he's divorcing my mom. Oh. Yeah, sometimes that happens in um in our village when someone decides to end a, a, a hand fasting or if they decide to to move away from the, the community and then it's really hard because you know everybody grows up together and nobody wants to have to say goodbye it's pretty messed up yeah that's why we left that's Wait, why we're here what do you mean we ran away i took him and we left the house we ran and that's how you ended up in wild space well there was this museum nearby. It was a stupid idea. You know, we're kids. We don't know what we're doing. And we just needed to stay. We had no place to stay. So we went to the museum and hung out in the bathroom until closing. And when it closed, we just kind of lived there. We lived in the bed and kind of made ourselves home. And we could do that for a little bit. And then one day, there's like this mirror in one of the exhibits that just started glowing bright. And, uh, you know, he wanted to, we walked over there and looked at that and we got sucked in. That's how I'm here. And next thing I know, I can throw fireballs at people. They have no idea what's going on. I just want to go home. Well, um, I don't know what I can do, Pix, but... If there's anything I can do to help you to, f to find your brother and get back where you're from, then you can count on me, okay? Oh, it, it really means a lot to me. I'm sorry, I, I get punchy sometimes and I act like a little bitch, but... Oh. <laughs> she laughs, yeah. <laughs> you said just, bitch. Just, this is the first, you're like, I don't know, the first friend I've had since I've been here. Well... Oh. I think maybe some of the other people on the ship would be your friends too, but I know it's hard because some of them are um, kind of weird. And, uh, yeah, they're weird and they smell weird. But I mean, they mean well. And yeah, if someone tried to hurt them, I would probably hurt the person. You know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, if somebody hurts Salt, I would definitely tear their head off and just spit down their neck. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably yeah. do that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, I I could pop their head off with my trunk if I tried, you know? <laughs> I'll let you do the killing then. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird thing to bond over, Pix, but um, I'm really glad you're my friend. Thanks. I'm glad you're my friend, too. All right. Um, I'm going to I'm going to turn out the light. OK. And Pix yawns and says, OK. And her, okay, her, bestie. her trunk like lifts off the blanket and moves over to the uh, the candle and pff, blows it out. <laughs> um, so we are now going to bring that that very long day to a close, uh, and everybody will have a full rest as you all in various places find somewhere to sleep, except for Wally. Wally's not sleeping. Uh, <laughs> Wally eventually does sleep. Um, 
Um, some yeah, I'm not ready to go to sleep like yet. One oh, o'clock in the somewhere around one o'clock in the morning, Wally just falls asleep on the table. He's finished his vellum. He's you know dusted it, whatever he has to do to make the ink you know fast, uh, and rolled it up, and he falls asleep on the table, clutching the scroll that he's been working on all this time, and he just sleeps on the table like that. Uh, scraps and salt. Did you guys have any last things that you wanted to? Yes, to... I am staying aboard the ship, and while others are sleeping, perhaps I am going to be. Um, investigating the armaments that we have with the ship, like the cannons, the, there are cannons, right? <laughs> you have a, you have a singular ballista on mounted on the back of the uh, top deck. Is that it? That's, that's the only, that is literally it. it. Does it work? I'm, yeah, yeah, I want to investigate, check it, clean it. Sure, 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 sure. All uh, right. Then make, maybe you can make a tools check yeah. and make sure and, uh, and, and, with your intelligence modifier and see how everything is. Okay. Nice. I will do I will I will make a tool check oh, with my intelligence check. modifier. Thank you very much. Ah, 16 for a 25. Um yeah, uh you disassemble the winding mechanism. You take apart the trigger mechanism. You oil every little piece, you put it back together. It is in pristine working order. And um, now I, I would like to brew some more. I want to brew some stuff, man. Are you not going to take a long rest then? You're not going to sleep for the evening? I would like to sleep for an evening. Um, actually, I might not even need to. What, what's my... Let me take a look. I'm at max HP. I haven't used any spell slots. So like, I guess actually I don't... Oh, wait, no, I have used some spells. So I do need to take a rest. So um, in hunting down that brain and the captain... Um, am I allowed to take any further actions in terms of maybe making some special ammunition for this ballista? Um, would I still have time to do that before taking my long rest? Uh, it's already late in the evening. You had a battle. You can either go to sleep or you can stay up and do research. Um, cause this is then like, gonna... that'd be a long, a longer term thing to figure out new construction things for a ballista rather than just bullets. Um, so that would be a pretty long Great. Period. So morning finds you all in various states. Uh, scraps and salt, you both awaken on board the Lady Luck. At some point in the evening, Lovis uh, returned back to his home. And, and, and Oh, no, I'm, I'm going with Lovis. Oh, you are. So you're going to leave with him that evening and go and stay in the village. Yes. Okay. You do so. Uh, you wake up in an unfamiliar place in a, a small room, sparsely furnished, but comfortable enough. Pix, you wake up, Thessalia is gone, but you hear someone humming in the kitchen. Um, and Wally, you wake yeah. up uh, with your face stuck to a wooden table and you peel it off. Uh, and there is just the taste in your mouth, man. It's like oh. something crawled up in there and died. Oh, God. Oh, did I? Oh, was I making out with a Gorgon again? Oh, God. It's like Brussels sprouts and sour lemon juice in your mouth. That's horrendous. Um, oh, okay, but then. yes, all of you eventually come to, and uh, the day is yours. Um, the majority of you are in sort of guest houses here and there. Wally is still in the main house. Picks you with um, Thessalia, and she treats you to a lovely, uh, simple breakfast of kind of uh, some sort of oat with uh, fruit preserves in it and, and um, actually something that kind of seems very much like maple syrup. Um, yeah, that's really good. Oh, yeah, we, well, you know, agriculture's kind of our thing around here. There's a creature that lives underneath the ocean. It has two hard shells and a soft belly. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Who are you saying this to? Aren't we just sort of like gathering? Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like the the group people, you know, the the local residents. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know this creature? Two hard shadows and a soft belly, like Do a toad. Like, like crab? And he, well, he snaps his fingers, and all of a sudden, there's this giant crab perched on his shoulder. Like that, but more like this. And I take out my sheet of burnished tin or metal, and 
inscribe upon it with my alchemical tools, which leave a glowing trace as I sketch an oyster like this. Do you have this creature here? Mm, might have them closer to the coast, perhaps. Uh... <sighs> well, inside this creature, sometimes there's a precious jewel. It looks like this. And I tap the open mouth of the oyster and draw a pearl. Oh, you mean Shimmers. a pearl? Yeah, we know what pearls oh, are. You... Ah! Yeah, we're, listen, we're, we're a somewhat I, I isolated... Like backwards yokels. We're a somewhat isolated mushroom-worshipping cult, but we're not, you know, uneducated. We know what pearls mm -hmm. are. Give a, can we buy some from you? Uh, we might have some. Hope we might. Uh, hold on a moment. Let me go and see if um, we've done some trading recently with uh, some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, mm, uh, people who come in from, uh, you know, outside no, of who? outside of people. Who? Like, who? No. Who? Uh, who are you tra talking about? Tra traders. You you know, pe pe people no, of who. Who do you mean? Um, inside check. Inside check. Inside check. Inside check. Inside check. Inside uh, check. I can't. I can't roll. Can, can someone else roll for you? Like you are so intense about this inside check. <laughs> he's, inside check. He's being I don't even want to let I him can, talk. I want to know it's bullshit. <laughs> I can feel it. It's bullshit. They're hiding something. Uh, <laughs> you roll a natural twenty for a twenty-two. Wow, you're just blowing through these. This is how statistics works. Um, Why can't we do this in combat? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> He just, you can tell that he's like, he realized he was starting to say something, forgetting that you don't know stuff, and you catch that his eyes keep darting to Lovis, and, and like, he's hemming and hawing and trying to, like, just get to the point of what he was saying without getting further sidetracked about this thing. Uh, pe pe people, you know, we we do we do. Uh, there's there's medicinal uh, uh, properties, uh, things that we. Um, oh, know. you mean you sell the mushrooms sometimes? Is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yes, you yes. Sell yes the we, sell, we, oh, sell we sell mushrooms. We sell mushrooms. We sell we sell mushrooms with healing healing qualities to people. Who sure, have and sometimes other and sometimes other qualities that uh, people are interested in. Well, I wouldn't know about that kind of thing. I, that's. Uh, um, Sure, they have all sorts of properties. They're good for cooking. They're good for healing. They're good for the they're good for the belly, the di digestive things. Uh, all sorts of different things. I'm I'm not I'm not one who does the trading, so I wouldn't know. But uh, I'm sure Lovis would know more about that. <laughs> and and uh, Lovis comes over. Was that was that the thing? Like, can I determine? Like, is that the thing he was trying to hide? Is that they sell mushrooms to people? Like not. That's a that's a like pretty me. good you pretty good role. The thing that you noticed all of the hemming and hawing about was not so much that they are selling mushrooms with different qualities. It was when you said who, and that's uh, when he yeah, suddenly was, was like, I was, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, people, Pe people. Listen, leave our yeah, drug dealing friends alone. People okay? who need. People. I just I just want to know if they're selling mushrooms to like say, the illithid or <laughs> you know what I mean like. Listen, I don't care oh, yeah. if they're selling mushrooms to garden variety crooks and murderers. That's of no concern <laughs> to me or us. <laughs> so <laughs> Lovis, Lovis comes bustling over at this news. Uh, can I can I help in some way? I you are all discussing uh, something. Uh, scraps, scraps. Yes, yes, like, uh, yes. Yeah, just Lovis. This, these fine gentlemen were just asking about uh, um, trade and and. Looking for uh, what was it you said you wanted again? A, 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 a pearl? Ah, yes. Well, we That's we do right. uh, a pearl. We, Some pearls. I, I believe that we could have. Um, uh, we have a few this and that's. Uh, I, uh, let me bring you to the trade house. I um, tried making some. It didn't work right at all. I think they need to be pearls that come from inside this creature. The um, the what did you call it? The two shells. The meat. An oyster. Thank you never had oyster. one before. They're delicious. No, hey, I'd little, love to try a little bit of shaved truffle on it. You can you can eat them raw. You can. Yeah, you can... Like, oh, you I thought they were right vegetarian. The shell, it's like slimy, uh, salty snot. Uh, delicious. We're something of pesca they... we're pescatarians. We don't. We tend to eat things, but you know it's very hard to get fresh seafood out here. Oh, you only eat things without brains. Is that right? Um. Yes. Exactly. We don't. We. Uh, have a sense of, of kinship to those animals that 
that uh, are aware enough to think for themselves, but uh, fish are pretty dumb. You ever seen a fish? My God, they're stupid. Believe me, I, I've, my, uh, I've learned in my, in my ways to, to very briefly become some of these animals, and fish are just dumb as hell. Many people think that about worms, too. Oh, worms, yes. <laughs> I mean, they don't even have brains, well, do well, they? Ex- They're, ex- no, ex- they ex- they ex- just ex- work, on the squirm around in the dirt. Actually you, can, a brain- oh, God. you can fish with them, even. You put them on a hook. No, and, don't. Uh, not, oh. uh, worms. God. Catch a spell jammer, am I right? He says. <laughs> Catch a spell jammer on the uh, hook. <laughs> worms. Anyway. Um, uh, but, but but here, let me bring you to the trade house. And if you choose to follow him, he eventually goes out to kind of this um, large uh, uh, warehouse-like building with, that, that is kept under lock and key. And he pulls a lock out from a key out from under his robes, and he um, unlocks it. And you see that there's kind of kind of um, rows of of wooden shelves that have been built, uh, and there are barrels and and boxes and things like that. We have traders come through, and we are able to to sell some of our wares, and in return, we get the things that we cannot provide for ourselves. And of course, then we keep them here to be distributed later to those who have need of them. We're somewhat of a anarcho-socialist collective. Also, we have a theocracy, but it's not really like, you know, like, it's not like a crazy theocracy. We just worship um, a deity who embodies himself in mushrooms. When I say it out loud like that, it does sound strange. No, it's totally cool. I think my friend's just afraid that you guys are drug dealers, which is really funny for a guy who is, you know, an evil space worm. But, you know. Who's an evil space worm? He's a space worm. You know, he's a bird. Yeah, but he's also a space worm. Long story. Doesn't really matter. Uh, He's just saying that he's like, he's concerned that you guys might be like, you know, drug dealers. Well, I mean, I wouldn't label us that way. I'm, I'm not concerned. I'm. Wally, I make potions and poisons and have oh, sold we, them before. Oh, we, good. I'm, no, I'm glad I, I was mistaken then because I thought it was weird that you were concerned about these guys being drug dealers given that we're like kind of like marauding, you know. I'm family. only concerned to whom they might be. It's best if the illithid stay far away from your people. Oh, we don't do dealings is, with the alloyed assembly. No, no, no. That would good. be... Or any of the illithids. Oh, no, we don't... Typically, we don't. They have no desire to interact with us. They, you know, for as a species that typically does a lot of um, exploration of uh, their own minds. I mean, they're really they're really big on the, the the mind connecting thing. They don't really, I think, do a lot of psychoactive drugs. It doesn't. Well, it doesn't then, Lovis, I'm not. I'm not concerned about with whom you and your people do your business. Well, there, there'd be nothing, nothing to be concerned about. I mean, we don't. There's no. That's there. right. I'm not concerned at all. Yes. There's no concern. Great. Here. So no one is concerned. I'm. I'm glad that there's no concern. I was worried no. that there was concern. There and I yeah, there is. Now that there's not concern, I, I, I load off my mind. I no longer need to be concerned. Concernless. I'm uncon- unconcerned. And he kind of just stands there awkwardly for a moment, and then. So the pearls. Glances the pearls. To the, yes, here's a pearl. Um, do you need how many? I don't. I mean, for for keeping my darling Thessalia safe, it's a few pearls is is, is nothing. Uh, how many? How many do you need? How about a pearl necklace? <laughs> he, he he like he like glances at you, Wally, and he's like. <laughs> How about just a couple of pearls? Yeah, that, that'll probably do. Little pervert. <laughs> this was a 50 Feet of Rope production. You can find us at 50feetofrope.com. If you like the show, please consider subscribing and leaving a review.